I'm saying so you can actually have it to replay it if you need to. So right now it's recording everything I'm saying and what's on the screen. All right, so with that said, let's start with 1.1 because that's where I want you to get started at. So we're gonna talk about function definitions and how to define what it is, domains and ranges. You've probably heard some of these words before, right? How to test for functionality, whether it's a function or not, the notation for it, and then whenever you see the words mathematical model, there is a word problem coming that associates with the topic that we're doing. So here is next slide. For some reason it does that when I jump to my next, next slide. Next slide. All right, function definition. Now, this is the mathematical ver verbiage for what a function is. You can read it, and it says a rule or correspondence that assigns to each element of one set exactly one element from a second set. Does that mean anything to you? In English, does that mean, does that make you think, oh yeah, I get it, I know what that is. Maybe not. So let me put it in English where it makes more sense to you. More sense to you. Do you have a dryer at your house or do you know somebody has a dryer? Have you used one before or you know somebody that's used one before? Yes, I'm expecting y'all, you know I'm expecting y'all to talk back to me, right? Okay, all right. This is my picture of my dryer. Don't laugh at my artwork, but that's what my dryer pretty much looks like. Well, actually, and it has this part to it. So now, does it better look like a dryer now? All right. So, what do you do with this dryer? Okay. What goes into it? Clothes. Just any kind of clothes? Wet clothes. Wet clothes. All right. So you got wet clothes that are gonna go. You like how in the world is she gonna link this to what a function is? I'm gonna put wet clothes inside of here. What happens in here? Okay, something's happening inside of this dryer. You don't care what it does as long as it dries your clothes, right? All right, what's going to come out? Dry clothes. Dry clothes. Dry clothes. All ready? So, question. If you put in a red wet shirt, are you going to get a dry red shirt? Are you, or are you going to get a purple dry shirt? You should not. Okay, so again, this is a red wet shirt, so you're going to get a red dry shirt. Is there a set of clothes over here that you're going to usually put into the dryer? A basket full, whatever you have yours in. You're going to put a set of clothes in, and you're going to get a? Is it going to be one one here and one that matches is going to come out? Sometimes mine is one sock. Well, mine is, yeah, socks disappear, so we're not going to include socks. <laughs> We're, we're gonna say a red shirt. We're not gonna use socks as a whole different, as a, something happens with the socks inside the dryer. All right, so we're talking about a red shirt. So you might have a red shirt in, you gonna get a dry red shirt out? You got a blue shirt? You gonna get a dry blue shirt out? White shirt, wet, white, wet, white shirt, you're gonna get a, a dry shirt out? You okay with that? So do I have a set of over here and it maps itself to exactly or corresponds to exactly one item on this side. Alrighty, so something always happens inside the dryer. Think of this mathematically as you've got something that's called input. Why do I call this the input side? What do I, what you think I'm gonna call this side? All right, we'll call this the output side. And inside of here, something is always happening, always. So, let's use numbers now. This was my example using clothes, wet clothes to dry clothes. If I put in a number, here is my input. I'm gonna input the number one inside. And I'm gonna use what's going on inside the dryer. Here's turning, turning, turning. I'm gonna say plus four. If I put a one inside, what should I get out? I should get a five. Is there any way possible I put a one and get a six? No, it's like you put a red shirt and you got a blue shirt out. Is that even possible? No. So same thing. This functions are you take one number from one set and it causes you have input over here. It's going to spit out one number over here. Is it possible for you to put in a 1 and you'd add 4 and get a 15? No, that's not possible. So we're saying if that happens, it's not, it's not considered a function. We're just defining what a function is. A function takes a set of one item, some numerical items, and it does something to it, 
and it spits out another number. And what it does to it is usually there's a relationship between the numbers. So are you okay with, don't write, you don't need this one because I want you to know this is what a function is in just kind of plain English. It takes one set, inputs it into something, does something to it, and spits out another set. Okay, questions? Questions? You got what I said? You got some input and some output and something happens in the middle. We okay with that? That's what that says in English. So here's the next slide. It's just giving you an example of what I did with the inputting into the dryer and something comes out. This last one over here is the one where I said, if you have one red wet shirt, excuse me, it's this one right here. I always said this one, if you have a red wet shirt, are you gonna get a red shirt and a blue shirt? So this one's not considered a function, but it was just showing you that this one's not a function. Now, if I put in a red wet, wet shirt with a collar and a red wet shirt without a collar, am I still gonna get a red shirt out? Yes. Yeah, it's still gonna be a red shirt. So that's why you just see the word output. It's still gonna be a red shirt. The only thing we're saying here is you can't put in one and get a six. <laughs> can't put in one and get a 17. It's only gonna do what's inside of here that's gonna produce an output. Alrighty, questions? I'm always gonna stop and ask you if there are any questions because I want you to ask me questions. Here's the next one, domain and range. So we've talked about input and output. Can I use the word domain for input? Yes. So here's the other word for, do for input, domain, and also the other word for output is range. So these words can be used interchangeably. So I can say domain or input. I can also say range or output. Now, a lot of times, what you will see them use for this is X and y. y. Do they always have to use X and Y for input and output? No. You'll see it a lot, but it's not going to always be the case. So I don't want you to get stuck on X is always input, because sometimes they'll switch it up on you. So X is input in this case, Y is output. Could I use V and W? Yep. Any letters of the alphabet but what standard is usually X and Y. Alrighty, what are you thinking? Are these up on your um, Instagram? This I just um, sent you in an email. I sent you the PowerPoint in the email. Did you guys get it? No. Y'all did, <laughs> did I not send it to y'all? I'm being now. Okay, alrighty. Um, would you like to have it right now? Or would you prefer I just wait to the end? Okay, I'm gonna, but okay. I'm supposed to, and I don't, I think I just forgot because the days, we got snow days and I got, I forgot. But usually I will send you the PowerPoint for the entire chapter. So you'll have exactly what I have up on this screen. So you can either print it out, write on it, however you wanna do it. Oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you that if for some reason you're trying to write what I have here on the board and maybe I'm still talking or I'm talking about the next topic, it's very important that you take a picture. I have no problem with you taking a picture of what's on this board because after I'm done with this board, I'm usually gonna push it up the top and start on a different board. I'll erase that one after I, after I feel like everybody's gotten comfortable. So if you can't keep the writing up, trying to write it and listen, sometimes it's difficult to write and listen at the same time. Like, wait, 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 take a picture. You can print that out when you get home, or you can just look at it when you get home. But take a picture. I don't have any problem with that at all. You can record this class if you want to. I'll have no problem with that either. So whatever is going to help will be wonderful. All right, domain and range. We said they're the same thing as input and output. One is dependent on the other one. So let's go back and use our example again. Is this dependent or is this dependent? Is this in independent or independent? Which one depends on the other one? Wow. Right, so this one says, I'm dependent over here. Output is always dependent on what went in and what happened. So this side, or all the output values, is always dependent on what the input is and what happens inside the dryer. So this side is always considered dependent. Always over here is gonna be dependent on something happening over here. This is always independent. Okay, input values are always independent, output values are always dependent. Alrighty, so here is the next big chunk of material. I am gonna give you 
four different ways or four different types of functions. And I'm going to show you, so I'm going to actually, you definitely want to capture this part. So I'm going to push this board up. And I'm going to show you the first type is going to be numerical. So I'm going to show you a numerical function. Here we go. I am going to create ordered pairs. Oops, that's supposed to be 10. So 1 comma 10, 2 comma 20, 3 comma 30, 4 comma 40. In this particular case, I'm going to call these X's. Over here to the right are going to be my Y's, or you can call them input over here, output over here. All right, so here is my question to you. This is a type of function, and it maps one number from one set to a second number in a second set. So can you see that there's a relationship between 1 and 10, 2 and 23, and 30, and 4 and 40? What's the relationship? What caused the number to become a 10, a 20, a 30, a 40? What happened inside the dryer? Okay, so here is my dryer again. And so here is times 10. So what went in a 1 came out a? 10. Went in a 2 came out a? So you see what happened here? One set of numbers went in, one set of numbers came out. This is called a numerical function. This was called the numerical function, and these are called ordered pairs. So let me write this over here. These are called ordered pairs. So this is one type of numerical function, ordered pairs. So on the homework, it's going to say, is that a function? And you're going to say, yes, it is, because one number went in and one number came out. Now, here's the trick to this one. If you're looking at this set of numbers and you're trying to figure out if it is or isn't, here's the shortcut. All the x values have to be different. All the input values, I'm restating the same thing. All the input values have to all be different. Are they? One, two, three, four. Are those all different numbers? Yes. So that's your hint. Hint that you don't even have to look at input and output. Hint. All input values have to be different. You got it? So I'm just going to make up one right now. So here's the next one. Let me just make one up for you real quick. All right. 1, 15, 2, 37, 3, 49, 5, 65. All right. Question. Is this a function? Yes. Why? All the input values are all different. What if I had made these 15, 15, 15, 15, and 15? Is it still a function? Yes, because all the x values are different. Do I care about what the y values are? We don't care. We only care if all the x values are all different. Okay, so that's fine. Here is the second numerical type of function. Have you seen this one before? What's this one called? It's the xy table or xy chart. I'm going to use the exact same numbers that I just used. They could be written in this form. That wrong. Same rule applies. Are all the x values different? Yes. So is it a function? Yes. yes, it is. Okay, so you've got an xy table. What if you have something called a um, mapping or a map? Here's what a map or a mapping looks like. Usually they have circles around them, but they don't have to have circles. Here's your input. Here's your output. I'm going to use the same numbers I'm using. 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 30, 40. They may have the circles. They may not. They're going to draw arrows. That's what it's going to look like in the homework. They may not put the circles around them, but they're going to draw arrows to it. So... 1 comma 10, you still can read it the same way, 1 comma 10. So 1 went in, 10 came out. 2 went in, 20 came out. 3 went in, 30 came out. 4 went in, 40 came out. Still a function, right? What happened if I did this? And this will happen on your homework. What happened if I actually did this? 
What changed? Output. So tell me now, one went in, 10 came out, two went in, 20 came out, three went in, 30 came out, four went in and 30 came out, and four went in again and now is it a function? No. 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 You understand why? All my x values are not different anymore. I got a one, two, three, and a four, four. So no longer is it a function. So when you see this in the homework, if you have a four or you have any of these input values and there's two arrows going to two separate <coughs> numbers, not a function. It's not a function. So with this red here, it's not a function. If I take the red away, it is a function. All the x values have to be different. And since these actually duplicate the number four, it's no longer a function. So the way it's written here, not a function. These two are functions. Okay. <clears throat> These are all numerical types of functions. <clears throat> Questions? All right, I'm going to do the verbal one last. Let's do the graphical one and then the algebraic one. All right, so graphical. You're going to be given a graph, and here's my graph. Do you remember what these lines are called? What's this line called? This one, the vertical one. Okay, so this is Y. What's this one called? Okay, there's my x-axis. So what if I give you a graph that looks like this? Um, and I'm going to actually, let me just actually use the same numbers I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, all righty, so I'm just going to plot these points. You remember how to plot points? Okay, so if I'm plotting these points that I, not for, oh, let me break, let, let's leave this here so we know that was 40. I'm going to plot these original points that I have over here, 110, 220, 330, and 440. So I'm going to plot over 1, up 10. Is that right? Yes. Okay, put a point. Over 2, up 20, put a point. Over 3, up 40, put up 30, put a point. Over 4, up 40. All right, draw a line to connect the dots. You're not going to have to do this in homework, but I'm just showing you this, how I created this line. All righty. There's the graph. You're just going to get a graph in the homework. It's just going to have a picture. It could be a shape of a curve, a straight line, but it's going to give you a picture of a graph. How do you tell me if it's a fun function or not? It's just a straight line. Do the vertical line test. So here, do the vertical line test. Draw a vertical line, just one, up and down. If it hits that black line one time, it's a function. If it hits it twice or more than two times, it's not a function. So here's my line. I drew a vertical line. Did it hit it? Mm -hmm. The black line. Did it touch the black line? Mm -hmm. How many times? Once. One time. It's a function. So yes, this graph is a function. Every time you get a graph, you're supposed to do the vertical line test. Every single time. Ready? Questions about the graphical method? Literally, look at the picture and see if you can draw a vertical line through and see if it hits it twice. All right, so let me give you another picture. What if my graph looked like this? Mm -hmm. Vertical line test, does it pass? No, no does not pass, so not a function. <coughs> okay, you okay? What if my curve looked like this? Does it pass? Yes. You can only draw one, one vertical line. You can't draw five. You can only draw one. So if you draw one vertical line, it passes. So if the curve looks like this, it'll pass. Where do you draw the vertical line? Anywhere. I could have drawn one right here. I could have drawn one right here. Just as long as you don't draw but one. Anywhere so it touches the curve or touches this line or touches that curve. But you can just only draw one. As you draw it on the curve. And you've got to draw it so that it hits it so that it touches it. 
So if again, if I give you a graph that looks like that, that's my graph, my picture of my graph looks like that. Draw one vertical line. You wanna draw here, you wanna draw here, you wanna draw over here, but you gotta draw it so it touches it. You can't draw the vertical line over here. You've gotta make it touch this curve. What you thinking? Not right here, it ain't touching it. It ain't touching this red and the black ain't touching it. Okay? It's touching it. It's touching it. But how many times is it touching it? Oh. It can only touch it once. It can only touch it once. If it touches it twice, it's not a function. That's for every graphical example that you're given. You always have to do the vertical line test. All right, questions about the graph? All right, well, let's do the algebraic one. Whenever you see the word algebra, there is an equation. So the algebra one, it will always be an equation. So looking, look for an equation. All right, so here's my equation. I'm going to use the equation that I'm going to create from this one. What kind of equation can I create? What, how, what do I have to do to 1 to turn into a 10, 2 to turn into a 20, 3 to turn into a 30, 4 to turn into a 40? Multiply by 10. Oh, so let's create the equation that's this. Does that sound like that equation would match those, that data that we have over there, the XY table? Yes. yes, it would. So here's my equation. I, in, on purpose, created it so it would match that information we put on the board. All righty. So in the homework, it's going to give you an equation. What did you do with that equation? Type it into Desmos. So now go type this equation into www.desmos.com. Got it? Once you type it in there, what do you think you're going to get? Uh, you're going to get some points, but it's going to be a picture of some graph. So once you type it in there, it's going to create a picture for you. What should you do once you get a picture? The vertical line test. So after you see the picture, or see the graph, after you see, well, I'm going to say what your graph looks like. What your graph looks like. Then do the vertical line test. All right, questions. After you see what your graph looks like, then do a vertical line test every single time. So if I give you an equation, you go straight to the graphing tool, type it in, see what your picture looks like, do the vertical line test. You can do the vertical line in your head. So depending on what the picture looks like, you can tell if it's going to touch it how many times just by looking at it. Question. So here's what this graph is going to look like. It's going to look just like this one. So over here, when you type it in Desmos, it's going to look just like the picture you see right here. And then you're going to say, oh, it passes the vertical line test. That's what it's going to look like in Desmos. So questions. What questions do you have? So you're good up to this point. We did numerical. We did graphical. We did algebraic, which is just an equation. Are you cool with determining if it's a function based upon these three types that I've given you on the board? Yes? And I understand you need practice. I'm just saying we want to make sure we all understand. You're okay? Yes. All righty. Can I erase what's on the top board? If y'all taking a picture, take a picture. All right. Here's the last type of this one, which is called a verbal function. All right, so here's the verbal function. I'm going to give you a statement. And you've got to figure out if you can create an XY table from that statement. Ready? The amount of money in your checking account on any given day. X. <laughs> okay, ready? The amount of money, this is the verb, we're doing the verbal one, so this is the verbal. The amount of money in your checking account. It's a government shutdown. Um, Nothing's going to come out. You said you're not getting paid on any given day x 
it will always tell you that X is going to be on the end. When it states, when it makes the statement, it's always going to put X over there on that side. Always. That tells you what X represents. So first thing you have to do is go and create you an XY table. Alrighty? So when you create your XY table, they tell you at the end that X is any given day. Always. This goes with this. If it said month, you would be X is the month. If it said cars, X would be a car. Whatever it says at the end of that statement, that's what X refers to. So we know X is the days of the week, right? Okay, so do you know what the days of the week are? <laughs> Y'all like, okay, don't insult my intelligence. Okay, Monday, Tuesday. Let's write this in a different color. Alrighty, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Alrighty, you good so far? Do I have some input values? Or input categories here. Mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Those are my input. So when I put this in, something's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Wells Fargo or SunTrust or Bank of America or whoever, and you go online and you check your account, you gonna see the balance? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So let's say we started out here. You started out on Monday, you had five hundred dollars in your account. Then you bought some groceries. Well, you spent $50 on groceries, so now you got $450. All right. Then you realize, hey, I'm going to need some gas for my car. So I'm going to need about $20 of gas. So now I got $430 in here. Okay. All right. On Thursday, you know, you were blessed and somebody gave you $100. So you were back at $530. Friday came and you got to get ready for the party. So you're like, okay, I'm going to need some this cute outfit that I'm gonna need and get some Kool-Aid. I'm gonna say Kool-Aid, we'll get some Kool-Aid. <laughs> we'll call it Kool-Aid. All right, so you spent, you spent, let's say you spent $100. We just spent $100 on Friday. Um, oh, okay, we gonna keep it at $100. You spent $100 on Friday. Saturday, you're trying to recoup from Friday, so you didn't spend no money. And then Sunday, you gotta put some money in church. So you put $20 in church, and now you got 14 <laughs> Okay, we're good? Mm -hmm. All right, so now you can see that on Monday, 500, Tuesday, 450, and so forth and so on. You plugged in Monday, you got a number. Now, I made these numbers up, of course, but it could be anybody's account, and you know what's in your account every day. Now, here's the question that I have. Looking at it right now, is it a function? Yes. Why? That's different. All these days are different. So if I leave it like this, it is a function. However, there's a catch. It says how much money is in your account on any given day X. Now here's what you have to ask yourself. Is it possible for me to write Monday twice? No. Did somebody say you can't check your account two times? Three times? How many times can you check your account? Does it anything in that statement tell me I can't check my account but one time a day? No. no. I check my account multiple times because you know you're waiting for stuff to clear and you want to make sure, okay, this building's going to clear this day. I need to know when stuff clears, so I check it multiple times a day just to make sure, you know, I'm not going over my limit. So I check it twice, two, three times a day. So is there anything in this statement that tells me I can't write Monday twice? Nothing. So I can check my account 55 times a day if I want to. So I can write Monday 50 times, 2 times, 10 times. If you can write this more than once, it's not a function. If you can write the day of the week more than one time, it's not a function. So as it's written right now, it is not a function. So here, you're trying to figure out what that is. This is not a function written just like it is. Not a function. How could I turn this statement so that it would be a function? Only check your account once. Only say at the end of that statement on any given day at one time. Or you can say at 5 p.m. Or you can say at closing. That tells me specifically I can only check my balance one time a day. That statement would have to say that in order for it to be a function. Mm 
Got it? Because here, if you got multiple, so this is saying, what this is actually saying is here's your dryer. You're saying you put Monday in and you got, what was it, 500 out. And you're also saying you put Monday in and you got 450 out. You can't put Monday in and get two different numbers unless it tells you to do so, unless it tells you to do something different. So these numbers can't be the same, or these words can't be the same. Remember, you can't put a wet red shirt in and get a blue one. So that's what this says. All right, questions? Okay, let me give you another example of that. Here is the other example, and I just realized my screen went out. I got it plugged up. That's interesting. Usually when I have the power cord in, it doesn't do that. So I'm not so I'm surprised it did that. Alrighty, so with this said, here's another example. All right. The amount of your cell phone bill in any given month X. You gotta go back and be able to create an XY table from it. Alrighty, what's X? What's the input value is gonna be? Months. months of the year. Alrighty, so I'm gonna do months as my X values here. And what do you think my <coughs> Y or my output is gonna be? Uh, your cell phone bill. Cell phone bill. The amount of your cell phone bill. All right, so that's my Y value. All right, how many months in the year? Yeah. All right, so first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleven, and twelve. All right, now your bill could average. I don't know. It could be a hundred dollars a month. Could be two hundred dollars a month. We're just gonna say it's one twenty-five. I say your bill is one hundred twenty-five dollars a month. <laughs> on month two, you have some overcharges. So your bill is now 150 for that month, but you got it back on track, so now it's back down to 125, and you didn't have no overage charges for the rest of the year. So it was 125 all the way down to December. Now question, is this a function or not? Yes. yes. And is there any way I could write the month twice? No. Tell me why not. You only get one bill. Now, I need you to think logically about this one. You only get one bill in a month. You're only paying one cell phone. Even if you're paying somebody else's bill, it's only, or somebody else, like my mama's phone is on mine. So even if you're paying somebody else's phone bill, it may still be on your plane. But usually, we only get one bill a month. I don't want the one I get, so I'm definitely not going to pay two. Right? So with this statement, you would never write the number one twice because you only get one bill a month. Does that make sense? Yes, no, what you thinking? Yes? Can't you can look at it twice, but it says how much is the, you can look at it twice, but you're only gonna get one. Oh, okay. The amount of the bill on per month, that's a per month bill. So yes, you can look at it twice. You can check it twice, but it wants to know what's the amount gonna be for just that one month. What do you mean when you say split the bill? Like you getting a bill at the 15th and the... You, and you can pay it, but they ain't gonna give you but one bill. It's still one bill. Correct. So they don't care if you pay half up front or half at the first of the month and half at the begin at the end of the month, but the key is, or middle of the month, but the key is that are you only gonna get one bill a month regardless of how you pay for it? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, questions? All right, so let's do another one. I'm just trying to make sure you get this. Here is the last one that I'm going to do with this one. Um, your weight um, in any given year on your birthday. Let me see if I can write this one. On on your birthday. Alrighty. 
So, again, this is talking about x over, this is, this should say x. All righty, so, at age one, did you have a birthday? Mm -hmm. Okay, at two, did you have a birthday? Yes. At three, did you have a birthday? Mm -hmm. So, again, this is, again, associated with each year you had a birthday. So, what are your birthdays in? Somebody tell me when your birthday is. July 1st. July 1st? Okay. So from July 1st, from what year? What year? 1998. Okay, you're still a baby. <laughs> 1998. Okay, so July 1st of 1998. Again, if we go back, if we go back to there, here's July 1st of 1999, July 1st of 2000, July 1st. You see what I'm doing? Okay. So here's the question. How much did you weigh on your day of birth? You might have been six pounds, seven pounds, whatever it was, right? So let's say you were nine pound baby. That's a big boy. Okay. And then the next year, you were how old? One. You were one year of age. And by then, what do you think you might have been? 22 pounds? I'm saying you're a year old. I'm, I'm making these numbers up, guys. By the time you're three years old, how much do you weigh? 32 pounds. I'm making this up. By the time you're four, you might be 40 pounds. Can I keep going with these numbers? Mm -hmm. By the time we get to today, right? So we're going to have birthday every year until he gets to today, to this year, right? Now, question. You see this written. Are we ever going to write July 1st, 1998 twice? No. Why? No. You only get one birthday a year. He ain't going to have two birthdays in 1998 and two in the next year. So is this a function? Yes. Because yes, you only get one birthday a year. Can't write the birthday twice. Okay? Questions? All right. So that gives you all the different types of functions and how you test for them. So that's when the homework, That's this is what they're going to ask you to do in the homework. You're going to have every single type that you see, and it's going to ask you, is it a function? How it will say it. Sometimes it's going to say, is it a function? And sometimes it's going to say, let me write this down so you have it. Is this a function? You'll see this written one way. And then the other way is going to say it is y a a function of x. You're going to see it written either one of those two ways. It's still asking you, is it a function? So either way they state this, is this a function or is y a function of x? Now, here's what I always want to tell you. Whenever they write it like this, this will always be the output. When they write it in this format, this will always be output. Whatever variable this is. Did I say we, well, we may not always use x and y? I did. So whatever letter this is is always going to be output. Whatever is over here is always going to be input. Why am I telling you this? Because the very first problem in 1.1 is tricks you. I'll show it to you in a minute. But it tricks you, and it actually puts an X here and a Y there. It gives you an actual table with an X and Y table, but they switch these around. And so I would never trick you like that on a test. I would just be all right with it. But I'm just saying, whatever you see that says in front of, in front of as a function of, this is always going to be output. This will always be input. Always, always. No matter what letters of the alphabet they use. It's usually X and Y, but sometimes they're going to switch them and make, and I don't want you to be confused. The next slide just does what we all did. I did the examples of each one of them, and so those are the exercises I already pulled, so you don't need to go back and do those because we just did those. Here is the next slide. All right, so questions before we start talking about the notation for this. What questions do you have about what we just did? Right, but this says you can only tell me what your weight is on your birthday. This tells me I can only tell me what your weight is on your birthday. Just your birthday. So if your birthday is September 20th, 9th, you know, whatever the year is, it doesn't matter. But you can only tell me what your weight is on your birthday. But what if you were different weights? Like, what if you weigh yourself in the morning on your birthday and you 
it a different way. Okay, so then that means you want me to tell you on your birthday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. There you go. Now it's a function at 8 o'clock in the morning. Because, you know, again, that's the question. As women, do we get on the scale multiple times a day? I stopped doing that now. I'm not going to do that no more. So I just skip days. It'll be months before I get back on the scale again. So, but either way, you're right. This could actually end up being, because I said on your birthday, I didn't give you a time of day. So, yeah, I could say at 8 o'clock in the morning. So you wouldn't go get on the scale at 8, then at 9, and then at 10 and get on again. Which you're probably not going to do that, but it's possible. Good question. Very good question. All righty. Any other questions? All right. Function notation. Whenever you see <coughs> the statement, can I erase what's on the top board up here before I start giving you more information? Let's push this one up. Pull this one down. All righty. The very first statement you see up here is red. Y equals F of X. See bullet number one? How you read the first statement is just like bullet number one says it. Y equals F, parentheses means of, and then you got X. That's called function notation. We just learned about functions. They're all different types. I just showed you all different types. But they want to know if I ask you about one, can you write it a certain way? So this is how they want you to write it in a certain format. So you're going to see why. Do, are, is why considered output in this case? Yes. yes. Right. So here, the reason why they wrote it like this is they want for you to be able to plug a number in. If I give you an equation, can you plug a number in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When they write it in this format, they're going to give you a number to plug in. And they want you to be able to plug that number in. So the reason why I do this is because I could make this a 3, a 5, a 15, a 100. So whatever number that's inside of the parentheses is what I want you to plug in. So I'm just saying this is, saying this is called function notation. But this will always be what you input into the right. This is always your input. No matter what letter they put there, you're inputting whatever this is. Got it? This is always input. You read it, y equals f of x. What are you thinking? You're okay with it? It's just notation for right now. I'll make it make more sense in just a second. So then when they put the number in there and they say y equals f of x, and they give you the function, they want you to, like, how do you know, like, what, um, like, to divide or multiply? They're going to give you enough information so you know what to do, and then I'm going to show you an example so you'll know exactly what to do with it. So right now, I just want to make sure you, when you read this, y equals f of x, and x will always be your input, or whatever letter they use, whatever's inside that parentheses is always what you're going to be inputting into something. All right. So here is the second bullet. It says y is a function of x. Now, here's the question. On the first board that I had up here before, if I plug, let's use this again. If I plug in the number one, am I going to get an amount? Mm -hmm. If I plug in the number two, am I going to get an amount? Mm -hmm. So is Y, which is the amount of the bill, determined by what month it is? Yes. yes, it is. So that's the second bullet. Y is a function of X. Is your bill amount determined by what month it is? Yes, it is. That's what they're saying. It says, is Y determined by X? In English, the second bullet says, is Y being determined by X? That means, is the output being determined by the input? Yes. So we want to know if they give you something that's a function, we can say that. So is the amount of, B of the bill being determined by the month? Yes. Over here, we did this. Is your weight being determined by what, a, what the year you were born? Yes. Over here. Is your amount in your checking account being determined by the day? Well, we're saying this is not a function, so we're saying that's not necessarily true. All righty? So here is, I just want to make sure you understand, that's just the notation for it. Let me show you how to do it in um, real life. So let me just kind of give you a definition associated with mathematical models here. Every time you see the word mathematical models, it just means there's a word problem that we're going to associate 
with a set of numbers, then we, we might call them X, we might call them Y, but there's gonna be a word problem that we're gonna associate with the topic that we're talking about at the time. That's basically, and we're gonna use variables, X, Y, P, Q, whatever letters of the alphabet. So, here is the very first word problem that you will see in this class. Number one. All right, there are steps to solving word problems, and I need you to follow the steps just like I give them to you. Step one, can I erase what I have on the board here? All right, step one, what do you think step one is? Read. Read the problem. So let's do it. So step one, you should be reading the problem. I need you to follow these to the T. So that's your step one. Step two, understand the problem. That's still really kind of part of, part of reading the problem. Understand the problem. All right, so let's read it. We'll go through it step by step. Let's read it. Just read the first paragraph. Don't do the bullets yet. Okay. Now, question. In order to make sure you understand a word problem, at least when you read it, you have to make sure you know what every single word in that word problem means. Every single word. You know how you read a word problem, you're like, I don't know what that is. You gotta know exactly what every single word. So, question, what in the world is revenue? Money. money. Just any kind of money? I just walk by and pick up some money off the floor, that's revenue? Okay, money we made from what? Sale from the sale of, hats. in this case, hats. Hats. hats, especially hats. It could be golf hats, baseball hats, uh, football helmets, whatever it is, a hat. Here's the question. Revenue is from the sale of whatever it is you're selling, in this particular case, hats. And it gives me, what else, in there, in that particular problem? What else do you see the words? Or function? You know what the word function means now, right? All righty. Um... We know what specialty hats are. We defined what that is. Could be any type of hat you want to call it. Ah, they have R of parentheses with X in the middle. What is that? Okay, so I hear revenue of the hats, and I heard you were getting ready to say R of X. X. Is it the same thing that we did with this? Yes. yes. Why do you think they use the letter R? Because we're talking about revenue. So you will see that in the homework. They will usually use a letter that refers to the topic that we're talking about. So since we're doing revenue, instead of putting the F here, they put an R. All right. So is this my Y value or is this my output? Yeah, this is my output. So I know I got some output. So again, is there any other question of words that we don't understand in the problem? How do you really know if you understand a problem? If you can explain it to somebody else. If you can tell me what that means and go around and tell somebody else, tell it to your dog, your cat, I don't care who you tell it to. But if you can turn around and be like, let me explain what they want you to find in this problem. If you can explain what the topic is to somebody else, you understand that word problem. All righty? Do you understand the topic? Okay. Next question. What are... You give it. What do they give you? In every single word problem, they have to give you some stuff variables. to work with. So you got some variables. What's the first variable they gave you that you store? It doesn't matter what you call it, first or second. What variable did they give you? X. They gave you X, which refers to the what? The hats. They tell you specifically what X is. The hats old, The number of hats. So... Okay, so they gave you an X with variable with this called the number of the hat sold. Okay, what else did they give us? Did they give you R of X? Mm -hmm. What is it referring to? Yeah. Okay, the amount of revenue. Okay. All right, what else did they give you? They did in the first bullet. Just in that first statement, can I also write this as a given? Can I say this is what they gave me also? Did they give you an equation? Yes, they gave you an equation for the revenue. 
So they gave you three items for you to know what they are. Let me write the read this so y'all can write read my writing here. That should say amount. Okay. Now the amount is in dollars. So just make your dollar amount. Okay. Alrighty. That's what you're given. And usually you have to use what's given. Every now and then you'll find something in it that you won't need. But in most cases, you'll need the majority of the information you see. Is there anything else in there that they gave us in the first paragraph? The 32. And the 32. 32. Tell me what the 32 means. How many is it? Is it be, think about what it says. 32. How much the hats cost? Okay, so each hat costs $32. $32. So it's 32 for each hat. So I can see that from the problem. Each hat was $32. All righty. Now, next bullet. Excuse me, not next bullet, but next question. What are you going to do? What math needs to be performed? So that's what you're asking. What math do you do? Let's be done. So tell me what math needs to be done. Now, here's a question. Have we been talking about input and output? This, everything we're talking about here is some input, some comes out. Something goes in, some, something comes out. So what math must be done? Let's look at bullet number one. What is R of 200? And then we're going to talk about the results. What does the number in the parentheses always tell you to do? Input. It's your input. It goes in the dryer. Something's going to come out. So what is the math going to do? Plug in what? 200. Into what? Into the R of X equals 32 equation. You got to plug in 200 into R of X equals 32. So everywhere there's an X, I'm going to put a 200. Okay. All right. So next step says do the math. All righty. So let's go ahead and plug in our 200. So R of 200 goes here. Um, in the first bullet, it says, what is R of 200? You see it? So again, it's telling me what number to plug in. All righty, so everywhere there's an X, I'm going to put a 200. So it's 32 times, and here's my 200. All right, so go do the math. What's 32 times 200? Okay, I think I heard you say 6,400. 6,400 what? Dollars. 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 This is dollars. We're talking money. It's dollars. So once you do the math, it says R of 200 equals $6,400. All right. Tell me in English what that says in English. The revenue of 200 hats equals $6,400. Okay. I sold 200 hats and I made $6,400. My revenue was $6,400. That's what that says in English. <clears throat> Questions? These are the steps that you should follow for every single word problem. If there's anything you don't understand, that's the part of the first part of the problem. You're like, oh, I'm gonna. So if you come to me and say, um, I got stuck on this word problem, I'm gonna ask you, did you read the problem? And then I'm gonna ask you, did you understand every single word in the problem? He's like, no, I didn't know what that word was right there. That's the goal. If you don't know what a word means, we got to go find out what that word means to move forward. Once you understand all the words, then I'm going to ask you, what do they give you? Sometimes we miss some of the things that we're given, so just want to make sure. Follow those steps exactly to the tip when you're trying to solve word problems. Alrighty. So the second bullet. What does the second bullet say? What is the Tell me what's the difference between bullet one and bullet two? Nothing. It's just a different number. It's just a different number and the wording. wording. The word. So notice in the first one they use function notation. In the second one they just words. use words. So in the homework it's going to ask you some of the same types of questions. One's going to use words, one's going to use function notation. But they're trying to see if you understand it that it's the same type of problem. You okay with that? So, question for bullet number two. Tell me what you want me to do. Plug in 2500. Do I have to go back over and read the problem and understand the problem all over again? Yeah. No, I'm going to jump right in to where? Plug in I'm going to jump right into four and tell me what I'm going to plug in. So, I'm going to plug in 2500. R of 2500. R of 
2,500. 32 times 2,500. Somebody do that on the calculator. How much is that? 80,000 80, what? Dollars. Dollars. All right, tell me what it says in English. I sold. The revenue of 2,500 hats at $32 per hat. <laughs> $80,000. Okay. Or you can just say I sold 2500 hats and I made $80,000. I want to make it as simple as possible. Don't add no extra to it. I sold 2500 hats and I had a revenue of $80,000. Done. Okay. Questions? Last bullet. Function notation. In the homework, it's going to say write your answer in function notation. This is function notation all day. It won't require you to put the dollar sign. This is function notation. Let me mark it. Green. This is function notation. This is function notation in the boxes that you see in green. So when the homework says write your answer in function notation, it wants to see R of whatever number it is equals the other number. So is this input or output? Is this input or output? Got it? This went in the dryer, this came out. Questions? You feeling okay? This is what the homework is going to ask you to do. All right, next one. Here's the next one. I know I only got about, what time does this class end? 7.45? Yes. All right, I got about 15 minutes. All right, we're going to finish this section because we're almost done with it. All right, did you understand everything we just did? Stop me if you didn't. Don't play with me. Stop me if you didn't. Okay. All righty, so we're good? All right, it will always tell you in the, in the problem what X is. It will always define what X is. So I was gonna tell you what R of X or P of X or Q of X, whatever letter they use, and once you define it in function notation. Here is the next slide. Did we understand all this again? Y'all said yes, and again you said yes. All right, so here there's next problem. Next word problem, this finishes 1.1 for us. All righty. The profit from the production and sale, I'm just reading the problem because I'm doing step one. The profit from the production and sale of iPads is given by the function P of X is equal to 450X minus 0.1X squared minus 2000, where X is the number of iPads produced and sold. Question, do you understand every word, just the words, just to find the words. You know what produced means? Yes, you know what iPad is? You know what profit is? What's profit? Well, we just talked about revenue. What's the difference between profit and revenue? You got to pay your employees. You got to pay for your materials and your supplies and the space that you rented and all the stuff. Now, after you've paid all your expenses, you have profit. You have profit. Okay? Why did they choose P of X? Profit. P. Why do we choose P for profit? So they will usually pick a letter that's associated with whatever the topic is. So since we're talking about profit, they pick P. All right. So step one, we read the problem. Do you understand it? Yes? Okay. What are you given? Tell me what they gave you. Did they give you an X value? Or excuse me, did they define what X is for you? What's X? The number of iPads produced. Number of iPads. Okay. What else did they give you? Um, the, 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 the they gave you the equation, which is equal to all of that. X minus 0 0.1 X squared minus 2,000. 1, 1 X squared minus 2,000. And the P of X means what? What is the P of X? Profit. profit. All right. So that's the profit. Okay. All right. So that's what they gave us. All right. What's number four I want you to do? Bullet number one, what you supposed to do? What is P of 500? What's the profit when you sell 500? What's P of 500? What should you do? We're on, again, we just did step three because we read the problem already. Step four, what you gonna do? Plug in. Plug in what? The values, so the 500. Plug in 500. Step five, do, um, do the math. So somebody do that on the calculator. Get your calculator out. You gotta be able to do this on a test, so you gotta put this into your calculator. But you need to make sure you can put it in right. Everywhere there's an X, 
you should be putting 500. So if I'm typing this in my calculator, I'm putting 450. In parentheses here, it's going to be 500 here, minus 0.1x squared. So 500 squared minus 2,000. Somebody tell me what that number is. You plugged all of this in. So P of 500. Somebody tell me how much money I made. Profit. I can do what I want to do with it. Can everybody get that? $225,000? I want to make sure everybody got the same amount. Did you, did you check it? Yeah? I'm just asking because I want to make sure everybody got it on your calculator. Here's the calculator that I use when I'm online. Now, you won't be able to use it for your test purposes, but here's what I use when I'm online. It's called web2.0calc.com. As you can see, I plugged in my 500. Do you see I plugged in my 500? I'm going to hit enter. Now, let me see. Did I type it right? Y'all, look at what I did. I'm trying to make sure I didn't make a mistake up there. All right, that's 450 times 500. Minus one of the square. What's my what's my missing? What am I missing that I didn't type? Look what I did not type. Let me click here. It'll put the problem back up there. What's missing from this problem? I didn't put what? Minus the two thousand. Minus two thousand. So I can see what I typed. Now I can check and see if it's right. That's the answer that I got. What'd you get? That's what you should have gotten is 198,000. Now, if you don't get 198,000, that means you didn't put it in your calculator right. You got to be able to put this in your calculator right. All righty. So here is my answer for that one. 198,000 dollars was my profit. What's the next bullet want you to do? Go back to the PowerPoint again. What do you want to do for bullet two? Uh, profit of what should I do? Plug in All right, everywhere there is a 500, replace the 500 with? 4,000. Uh-huh, what's my answer? So now, I want P of 4,000, so erase that and put in a 4,000. So what's P of 4,000? Put in your calculator for me, please. Don't be scared to answer when you get your answer because you're going to think it's wrong. Let me go back to my calculator again. I'm supposed to replace everything I had in here with 4,000, right? Or zero. It's the same answer. And that's why most time when we do this problem, everybody's like, it can't be right. I sold 4,000, I ain't make no extra money. So how is it possible that you get the same answer? Well, let me ask you a question. You sold 4,000. <clears> is the labor more? Did you have to hire more people? Did you have more employees that had to work to, for you to do, to, for you to at least have inventory or you had materials that you needed to have 4,000 of them? Did you have to buy more supplies? Did you have more employees at work? So that means you had more Georgia Power bill, you had more water bill. Did you hire more employees? What was it that required more expenses? Did you have to have a bigger space? So the question is, is it possible for you to sell more and make the same amount? Yes. That means you got to rework your whole business plan because something is wrong. I'm going to keep selling 500 every pop. I'm not going to do the 4000 at all. So I'm just saying you've got to rework your plan if that's the case. All right. Questions? All right. If you have no questions, that is that should be the end of 1.1. You are done with 1.1. Done, done with 1.1. So you should be able to do everything in section 1.1. Everything. I know I got what? Nine minutes? I'm going to use my nine minutes, okay? Here's my nine minutes. I'm going to use my last few minutes on 1.2, the graph. So I'm going to click on this next graph. What tool am I going to use for graphing? I need to show you this because you got to be able to type 
the equations in Desmos. So here is Desmos for you that haven't seen it yet. Here is, I'm going to open up a new window, www.desmos.com. Make it a favorite on your computer because we'll use it. There's no download necessary. Start graphing. And you literally type the equation that you are given. So if I did x plus 3, there's my equation. It types the graph. Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, yes it does. What if I type a different one in here? x raised to the 2 power. Aha. Uh -huh. Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, yes it does. <laughs> Plotting points in here that you'll see in section 1.2. Here's where you create an XY table. Hit the plus button, hit table, and it'll let you do what we had here before, 1 comma 10. I'm going to delete this first one. That is 2 comma 20, 3 comma 30. This is the table that we created at the very beginning of class. 4 comma 40. You should be able to see the points on the screen. Why can I not see my points on the screen? My window got to be bigger because look at my biggest number of my y value. What's the biggest y value? 40. 40. Look at my y axis. Do I go up to 40? No. So you can go over here to your wrench and change your x and y axis. These two numbers change the x and y axis. What's your smallest number and your biggest number? On the y axis, down here at the bottom, what's your smallest number and your biggest number? So down here, I want my biggest y value to be what? Look at my y value. At least 40, so I'm going to put 50. All righty. Was my x-axis okay? Mm, yeah. From 1 to 4 is all I needed. I have more than enough to see. Now can I see all my points? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see all my points. If you want to see them in bold, hit projector mode, and it just makes them bold. All right, we'll go over more detail about that. When you come back, we'll finish up 1.2 and jump into 1.3. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask me. Did everybody sign the sign-in sheet? No. Okay, where's my sign-in sheet? Is anybody new? Anybody brand new today? Please make sure you see me. I got your email, and I send it back. So come see me if today's your first day. I sent one to my dean. Did you send You sent it to one, but I sent what you I forwarded on to my dean because she has to approve it as well. Did you send me back the email too with the one you did? Okay, so you're good. I just need to make sure. Did you you saw the syllabus? Yes. You got your access code? I don't know. Okay, so you got to go buy the code from the bookstore. At the bottom of the receipt, it's gonna tell you some steps to go to a website to get the access code. Okay. And then once you get that, you gotta go through D2L and click on my course, and it'll let you put the access code in. If you don't know how to do it, call the 888 number at the bottom. They will literally walk you through it. Thank you. Okay. Hey, I have a yeah. If you signed in though, I'll show you sign. Yeah, sign in. Make sure you sign in. Where's the sign in sheet? Okay. If I can take this course, do I need to purchase another code? You already took it? It's supposed to be good for a year. Your access code is supposed to be good it for is. a year. It let me, because um, it took me to the two of that I really good. And it let you write me. Right, so here's to my best Okay, so you're good then. You should be good. Um, and I replied to you. But I didn't see the syllabus. I replied. And I was like, you didn't What's your last name? Brown. Asia, because I thought I sent it to all of you guys as an attachment. I'll just resend it to you. Okay, I'll resend it. Okay. The quiz, uh, the quiz zero. It's one point zero comma one point one. It's two in the. You say you're gonna be changing that? I'm gonna change the date on all the quizzes because we didn't, we just now started today, so all the dates are gonna change. Who's got the sign in sheet? Right here. Okay, it's over there. Yeah, I sent another email out after I got your email to the person you sent to. It's not for us to my email, but she has to approve it. Okay, so that's why I had to do it. So I just need to check it tomorrow and see. So we'll check it. She'll send me an email back saying what happened, and then I'll return. Okay, all right, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. What are the best things? I'm going to check the date out. I'm gonna be, I'll go ahead and change the date tonight so it'll reopen and close that number again as close as the February. 
So you'll have at least a week to work on it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Couple questions. Go back up one. Yeah, go back. Okay. And do you still do your study class hour before? I do. So I'm just right in that classroom right next door. Okay. And it starts at five thirty. Okay. So you're more than welcome to come. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yes, ma'am. Today, I'm gonna to send them to you tonight. And then our study class Wednesday will start at 5 30. Will that give us the opportunity to go over this? Any of it. Any of it. We can go over anything that we did today or the homework, whatever you want to do, we can do that in that class. So if you have home specific homework questions, we can address any questions you have. Anything that you see, like I said, I saw I said it's important if you take a picture, so that way, you're not trying to write everything down right then and there, right. and you can go back and look at it and print it out if you want to, but you got what I had, and you're like, okay, I didn't understand what you did with this weight and birthday thing, you know what I'm saying? So that's why it's really important if you can't write everything, just to take a picture so we can go back over it, and I am working I on... I was a little lost, but I, I was so lost, I, didn't, I have to just look at it for a minute, and that's why...